There is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. You'll hear stories about this and so much more right here on Supernatural Confrontations. Today we're going to interview Scott Carpenter. Scott's an author and a Bigfoot researcher, and he's going to weigh in on what that image was, what he thinks it might be from the game trail camera that we showed a few weeks ago. So we'll get into that and so much more, but first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Low levels of collagen show up in more ways than one. Although sagging skin and wrinkles are the most common that come to mind, did you know that your nails, hair, and joints can also be signs of low collagen levels as well? It's well known that collagen levels can decrease by up to a shocking 10% every decade after the age of 30. That's why supplementing with collagen is so important to looking and feeling our very best. Folks, I take it every day and I'm glad I do. One of the quickest ways to help combat low levels of collagen is to supplement with a high quality collagen supplement. And there may not be a better choice than helpwithla.com, which uses five critically important types of collagen to help provide your skin, hair, nails, and joints with the nutrients that they need. These five critically important types of collagen help rejuvenate your skin with ingredients that research has shown to help fight visible signs of aging like dry, saggy skin, wrinkles, crow feet, and so much more, as well as your entire body. Formulated to be a highly effective collagen supplement, it's no wonder why tens of thousands of Americans are turning to it. Look your best this coming spring summer season for 51% off plus receive several free bonuses including VIP health coaching for life before the half off sale ends by going to www.healthwithla.com that's www.healthwithla.com or simply click the link below. Folks, once again, I take it every single day. I have noticed a difference. We've had some people write in and telling me after taking it for about 30 days, they've noticed the difference. Just think about this. You got a 60 day money back guarantee, right? You have five key types of collagen you need from four different sources. Folks, I take it, like I said, and um, I think it's great. Please go to healthwithla.com. That's healthwithla.com. Before I bring Scott in and we, and we do this interview, I want to say a couple of things here. Um, first of all, if... Um, and I have to be very careful how I say this, that we have taken implants, one, out of a person, Emil, all right? I stated in, this, in the recent Skywatch interview that I believe that these implants that we removed are prototypes of the mark of the beast. I want to say that again. They are, they, in my opinion, this is conjecture. It's based on my research. I believe that these are the prototypes for the mark of the beast that we read about, of course, in the book of Revelation. Does that mean that the chip that we took out, the implant that we took out of, of, of a meal, was the mark of the beast? No, it is not. If it means that you're an abductee and you've been taken and you've been implanted, does that mean that you have the mark of the beast? No, it does not. These are prototypes. They don't have it together yet. That's conjecture on my part. And here's something else. I could be 100% wrong. Uh, these implants are not the mark of the beast or prototypes of the mark of the beast. But I will say this. I truly believe that based on my research, that something is going on here, that whoever is doing it, and of course, these are the fallen ones, they have spent an inordinate amount of time and resources and energy in order to create these things. And moreover, the implant that was taken out of a meal decades ago was completely different than the last implant that Dr. Roger Lear took out shortly before he died. So there's an evolution of these implants, and they they seem to be energized, not through the circulatory system, but through the nervous system. They're very complex. We know that some of them have double-walled nanotubes in them. Could they be the mark of the beast? Absolutely. 
Does that mean that if you're an abductee and you have an implant, that, that you're irredeemable? Absolutely not. And I want to make that and really stress it um, from the bottom of my heart. These are prototypes. It's not here yet. I don't think it's here yet, but I think we're getting close. Hopefully that clears that up. The other thing I'd like to talk about before we get into what uh, the, the, this, the interview with Scott Carpenter and I were, were uh, talking about the Nord and this entity that appeared in front of the game trail camera. There's a woman who was on uh, our Supernatural Confrontations. I think she was number 38. I could be wrong on that. But uh, she's part of our Patreons. And she yesterday when I showed the picture, she said, that's a gin. D-G-I-N-N. -N. And it may be. Um, that certainly is a great explanation of what we are looking at. Anyway, folks, here's my interview with Scott. I'm here with Big, Bigfoot researcher, author Scott Carpenter. Um, Scott and I have talked in the past, and um, he's been on our show before, and we've I read his books, and, and it's just phenomenal research, and, and some of the photographs that he's taken over the years have been absolutely eye-opening. Uh, Scott believes that, as I do, that the Bigfoot, Sasquatch, is Nephilim, but we're here talking about the the Nord, that entity that appeared in front of the uh, game trail camera. And Scott, you've had literally decades of 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 use with a game trail camera. Tell us, give us your you know, sure. give us your your idea or your, or your thoughts on this on this entity that appeared. Well, yeah, like we were previously talking, I, I've had, uh, you know, I've attempted to capture, in, you know, the Sasquatch and similar entities on the trail camera and kind of how it looks and how they affect the camera. And, you know, in my opinion, this this is the real deal. And, and uh, we were just discussing one of a very inter interesting correlation between the Sasquatch and this entity is those people who are Sasquatch researchers uh, have this frustration with not being able to get a clear picture. And, it, and, and you know, it, the slang is blob squatch. Right. And everybody complains, you know, and everybody, you see the memes of making fun of the, you know, the blurry pictures. And I've even had, I've had people like send me pictures and they're like, no, you don't understand. This thing was 20 feet away. Perfect. I raised my cell phone up took a picture or took two pictures and then you know it come back out you know out of focus out of phase and and they're and you know and they'll send you a whole string of pictures and every 10 pictures before perfectly focused every 10 pictures after perfectly focused and those you know two or three of the entity were out of phase well it's the same thing with this nord that you have captured it it's out of phase it's out yep. of focus now it's close up but it's still out of focus and, and, you know, you could tell that this is a, looks like to me to be a high def camera. I mean, you, when you were showing the pictures of that gentleman, I mean, those were perfectly clear. I mean, of course it was getting dark. It was going into infrared mode, but, and that's why his eyes were glowing. It was, it was using the infrared mode, which was causing, you know, his eyes to reflect. And uh, so, but, you know, you noticed, you know, when that entity got in front of the camera, it was totally out of, it was out of focus. It was just just a smidge like out of phase, and I, I just felt that very interesting. Now the, these two different seemed unrelated phenomena, or you know, still you know have some correlation because they're supernatural. And I want to ask you something: the Nord had no eye shine, and and the timestamp was seven o'clock, so it's dark there. So it's mm -hmm. in the infrared mode, I'm assuming, and there's no eye yes. shine at all, and the eyes are like this. You know, and you, yeah, you saw very, the eyes are like really yeah, they're, weird. Yeah, they're almost square. They're, oh, yeah, they're, rectangle, they're, rectangle. Yeah, like a rectangle. Yeah, and and very odd, and 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 no reflection from the eye. Yeah. So, and and that could be a, you know, that could be a property of 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 that being. I know that the Sasquatch, they can make their eyes illuminate. In other words, red people have yeah. seen their eyes. You know, in other words, uh, red is is a, is a color. Has one friend who spotted one. At first, he thought it was a man smoking a cigarette, standing off in the woods. And then, as he got closer, the one cigarette became two glowing red eyes. Not good, but uh, <laughs> not good. But they could they could turn, but they can turn that off. And also, another thing that I, that I'm on to that I'm pretty sure they can do. They have a second set of lenses, like a snake lens. So. They have the normal lens and this lens goes the other direction 
So it makes, you know, it, you know, so it makes their eyes look like a, you know, snake eyes. Wow. And so, and I've, and more than one researcher has told me that close, it have close up, like if the sun's very bright, they'll do that or they'll even, you know, they'll, they'll close that in. So you get a vertical slits to kind of protect that eye. And another thing, I know that they're extremely sensitive to infrared light, the Sasquatch at least, because um, from both anecdotal evidence, evidence uh, from um, uh, we have keeping them away from people's homes, uh, infrared, passive infrared lights, uh, the cameras themselves. Uh, we've got people in uh, military areas that have seen them in the same areas. You've got the redheaded giant. There's several uh, firsthand accounts from soldiers, you know, seeing actual Sasquatch. And uh, one helicopter pilot was like, when they hit the Sasquatch with the infrared uh, rangefinder on their helicopter, said it was like they blinded it. it. It threw its hands up and it turned its head away. And they said, that's really a very, in that light, why it's intensive, you know, it's just a whole lot, you know, they, they were extremely sensitive to that. So, I, and I don't know if this entity was sensitive to that infrared or not. Well, what's interesting is, is, and we've talked about this before, and this is our third week talking about the entity in front of the camera. I believe that it's absolutely real. I don't believe it's a hoax on any level, especially after the talking to the owners of the property and getting that written statement, which I read last week about it. This is um, something's going on here. The entity looks right at the camera. I mean, it knows it knows where the camera is. It's looking right at the camera. And then it's wearing this really strange garb. And it's very androgynous looking. Is it male, yes. is it female? We don't know. Your thoughts? There, there's really no, it's almost featureless as far as the face. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, a nondescript humanoid. That's the only way I know it to say it. It really doesn't have a feminine or masculine look. I mean, you know, from our descriptions of angels, it's very close to their description. And same thing with the garb it was wearing. That, that you know, like almost like a, you know, like it had a cape or a tunic, and then and and in some sort of shirt. And and it was it, it was low cut. It's cold. You know, there was no indication this being was cold or being affected. No, not at all. Cold. Not at all. Not at all. And uh, so, you know, in, in my opinion. You know, and 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 the, the pointed ears, which I find interesting. Now, this could have, you know, like I said, this could have be some Nephilim hybrid that's been created by the fallen ones, or you know, who knows? I mean, I think, unfortunately, I think that technology to manipulate the genome has been once again, you know, let out of the box. How long ago? I don't know. I mean, you know, everybody has their pet theories where whether they made the deal in '47. With the Roswell incident or yeah, before, right, but right. I, and, and we I, don't I think know. I, yeah, we don't yeah. know. But I, I think, given, I mean, what the Nord and all the different, you know, cryptids there. You know, if you know, I work with David Plot, Plotties at times, and we get we get we get like Goatman. Uh, you get the Dogman creatures. You get uh, creatures that look like a snakehead. They call them snakeheads. Agree. Like, you know the goat man uh you know and, and it's just a hodgepodge uh genetic goobly gob you know yeah. you, you know you, it's just crazy some of it's just crazy oh, but you oh. don't really yeah but you just can't discount it i mean there's a three-toed creature running around in the desert you know in the four corners area that you know ha, you know it, some sort of reptilian thing it has the upper body of a man and the arms are a man with claws and a you know, and a, and, a, and a, you know that Gorn creature that was on Star Trek, very much uh, like that. And so you've just and, and you've got uh, like Sasquatch-like creatures running around with a with a bear-like head on it. I mean, it's just like they, you know, it's like someone was just tinkering just to see what they could come up with. Well, I I think that's yeah. exactly what's going on. It's the days of Noah. The Book of Enoch tells us that the angels sinned against the animal kingdom and created these chimeras, which, you know, some people just dismiss, but really, I mean, we can do that today and we can mix the DNA and we've heard all sorts of reports about this. Who knows what these godless men and women are doing in underground labs, you know, that are taking yeah. and splicing the movie splice a couple of years ago, right? Exactly the same. I agree. Yeah. They're showing. Yeah, I mean, 
they're showing the public what they're actually doing. But let me ask you something. Sure. This entity sure. had, had appeared to have pointed ears. I, I, I'm i going to take my ear and I'm going to yeah. do this. So it's like yeah, it already I can, I, can hear the, I can hear the feedback. Yeah. But that yeah. entity had a pointed ear. Your thoughts on that? Um, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of, you know, the stories we hear about the little people or the fairies and, and the pointed ears. And and so was this one, one of those entities just actually, you know, full size instead of uh, instead of a smaller entity? I don't know. I, I mean, that could be a characteristic of uh, these entities. Um, I know that uh, m like the Sasquatch mostly are reported with small round ears, but I, uh, as far as the dog man, I, you know, their ears are pointed, but on the side of their head. Right. You know, they're not like dog ears, they're pointed ears, but they're on the side of the head, not on the top. And so, you know, you know, it, it's a characteristic of, you know, I mean, it's almost like we're, you know, it, you know, we're into, uh, you know, uh, one of these sci-fi movies, you know, like Frodo and everything, you know, with these, you know, with these creatures. I mean, I mean, you know, it kind of reminds you of that. I mean, I, you know, it just, you know, it... I don't know. It almost looks contrived. It looks built. It looks, you know, it looks engineered. Let me ask you something. Uh, there, there doesn't seem to be any hair on the entity um, that I could see. Did you have a have no? A I didn't on that. No, I didn't see any hair at all. You know the way the way the lower it, it cut off. I don't know if there was any hair or it was wearing a hat. I don't or some sort of something on its head. Didn't see any though. But but the entity is very androgynous. I mean, that, when, the moment the moment she sent it, the moment I opened up the email and looked at this, I just went, "Oh my gosh!" You know, what am I looking at? Very very androgynous looking. You know, male, female, everything's blurred. Don't know what we're looking at. Um, exactly. I believe it's authentic. I believe it's one hundred percent authentic. Um, I think that it was sent there to intimidate. Because they were oh, doing this whole whole Bible study on you know the alien agenda, and there's pushback exactly. from the dark side. Um, yep. You know, Scott. Before I give you the last word, tell us um, tell us how to get a hold of your book because it's it's a it's a great read. And people, you know, you've been you've been in, unlike a lot of people, you've been in the field checking this thing out for a long time. Tell us how to get the book, please. Well, they uh, I sell the book, uh, my book on Amazon, and so they can search Amazon, uh, the Nephilim Among Us, uh, Scott Carpenter, and uh, that should that should take them right to it. And uh, they can also contact me. Uh, you know, you can if you go to YouTube and search Bigfoot Scott Carpenter, I'm going I'm going to come up. Yeah. And, uh, and I also have a, a, another web page called the Sasquatch Awareness Project. And if they go to that page, if they just if they'll search that page, uh, it, it should come up in Google and they should be able to go. And then I've got all my contact information there. And I'll, I'll give you the last word about this entity. We're calling it an Nord, for lack of a better description. Yeah. We don't know what it is, nor does anybody yeah. else out there. Um, and, I and before I let you go, um, what's what's troubling about all this is, you know, we can't sit down with Beelzebub and have a conversation. You know, what? what's this? Okay. What's that? What are you guys doing? That's not going to happen. So a lot of what no. we're talking about is conjecture. I'll certainly admit exactly. that. But, you know, it's based on, for you and for me, decades and decades of research. I'll give you the last word yeah. with that in mind. Sure. Uh, you know, there is a relationship between all the, all, all these things are going on these creatures that we're, we're seeing out there and i think this nord is one of them and uh I, I definitely think just like you i think it's legit i think it's a real uh entity uh you know i i think it given the way it appeared it's it's a hybrid entity you know i don't i don't i'm not convinced 100 that it, it's a fallen angel but you know you never know they can definitely manipulate their appearance but it, you know, my my two cents worth is it's a hybrid entity, uh, and you know, very very close to being human. Not you know, as far as the look, but not quite there yet. Right. And uh, and I I agree with you. I think it was sent to intimidate. Uh, they 
you know, they, they have the ability to, you know, follow you to your residence. That's no problem with them. You know, they have a different, you know, different, like you say, there's a different rule set for them. Yeah. And it's the same with the Sasquatch. There's this rule set. You know they're following rules, but you don't know what these rules are. Right. Sometimes you'll see them react and they'll want to hide or they, you know, they don't want to spill themselves or they won't speak to you. So, you you know, and it's, I think it's the same way with this, uh, you know, with this heavenly war we got going on. We don't know the protocols. We don't know, uh, you know, you know, what rule set or the rules they're playing by. And like you, had, you know, the Sasquatch are the same way. They're not going to speak to us. They're not going to talk to us. They're not going to, you know, you're not going to get anything, um, you know, concrete from them at all. So I agree with that. Yeah, but I think this entity is real for sure. I do too. Scott, thanks so much for coming on the record and, and weighing in on this entity, which has been ongoing. And, uh, um, you know, so far the people on the site have not had any other sightings and, um, we, you know, we are following with it. And, but you know what, it's just, to me, it's like the veil is thinning. Things are heating up uh, yeah, on, on all levels. So. Yes, I agree hundred percent. Uh, you know, from the UFO side to the what we call the cryptid side and all these crazy creatures, the reports are, I mean, they're coming in. My email, I mean, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm not a real popular guy, I don't think. And, you know, I used to get a dozen emails. I'm getting hundreds of emails. I mean, people are seeking me out and I, I'm getting literally, it's, it's, it's start, you know, it's starting to blossom and I'm starting to get hundreds of emails. And it's and, crazy. And, and likewise with us, it's, I can't keep up with it. It's impossible. I can't keep up yeah. with it. So, Scott, thanks so much for coming on the record. God bless you, sir. Stay safe. God bless you. I, I, I thank you for coming on. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, this is the deep end of the pool, and that's why we're going to pray uh, before we close. In the meantime, folks, we will be in Israel in October, lamarzuli.net. Sign up. Plenty of room on the bus or buses, and there's no other tour like it. We'll be going to places like Mount Hermon with a 200. Watch your angels descended in the days of Jared and created a pact. And they did the unthinkable. They took wives and whoever they chose went into them. And that's the beginning of the Nephilim. Then we go to Gilgal Raphaim, the wheel of the giants. We go to Tel Gezer, ancient megalithic site, ancient Canaanite site, where these rows of men her standing stones are. And of course, the huge 20 foot high tunnel. Why does a five foot six uh, Canaanite guy need a 20 foot high tunnel? He doesn't, of course, unless... If you're 12 or 14 feet tall, then it starts to make sense, but I digress. LAMarzulli.net, LAMarzulli.net. The Crop Circle video, we'll be shipping that out. Uh, we're very starting very soon. We should be getting product this week. We will be shipping out. Hope to see you at the Prophecy Watchers Conference. I will be there coming in on Thursday, kind of late. I'm, I'm speaking on Saturday right before the dinner hour, so it's a great time. There's an hour off, so I can go a little over. <laughs> and I uh, hope to see you there. It's always great to see the folks, 888 people. If you have not signed up for live streaming, please go to prophecywatchers.com and sign up. What are you waiting for? We'll be back tomorrow with another special episode of On the Trail of a Nephilim. I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. Remember, there is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. Thanks so much for watching.